Okay, let's continue on here by looking at some uh, trickier examples where we have some more computation to do. So, typical Ford 302 engine, one of the most common engines on Earth, uh, has a bore of 4 inches, a stroke of 3 inches, piston to deck clearance, that is to say the height of the piston to deck is 6 thousandths of an inch, and the gasket is 35 thousandths of an inch thick. Pistons have 6.4 cc's, and the cylinder heads have 60.5 C combustion chambers. Let's figure out the compression ratio. Here's the key. These are not volumes. I want you to notice that in the last example we did, all these numbers that you were given were already volumes. CCs, cubic inches, cubic inches, CCs, cubic inches. When you're given volumes, the compression ratio is not that hard to figure out. You find your clearance volume, and then you find your compression ratio. Since these are only dimensions, we need to calculate the volumes. So since all of our units have to match for all these, we are going to use cubic inches to do our work. So here we go. Let's start with volume number one. Up at the top of the cylinder is our combustion chambers. Now our combustion chambers, that is to say we have 60.5 cc heads, um, those are, that is the volume of our uh, combustion chamber, but we need to convert that over. So 60.5 cc's divided by 16.39 cc's per cubic inch turns out to be 3.69 cubic inches. Okay, let's talk about our head gasket just a little bit. Your head gasket has volume in it, and if you think about it, it's this space in here, and there's a little bit of thickness to that, but that volume is significant. If you could picture it, that volume would look like kind of a slab of bologna. It's a cylinder um, with pi times radius squared times height being the volume, but the height is just the thickness of the gasket. The height is very thin. Nonetheless, it is a cylinder, and so we're going to take pi times the radius squared times the height to be our volume, where our radius is still just half the bore, and our height is the thickness of the gasket. So with that in mind, volume number two, our gasket volume is going to be pi times our radius. We already established that the bore was 4.0 and therefore our radius is 2 inches. So we're going to take that and we're going to square it and we're going to multiply it by our height which is the thickness of the gasket 0 0.035. At that point you can type that into your calculator and we get a pretty small volume here that's 0.44 cubic inches, but that is our second volume. Now our third volume, the one below that, is our deck volume. Let's talk about deck volume for a minute. Okay, The deck volume is this space up above the piston, even though the block is way up here. So the piston doesn't go all the way to the top of the block, and you can see it in this picture that there is a little bit of space up here above the piston but below the top of the block that is our piston to deck volume and like a gasket that's a circle the size of the piston but it's really really short and so our radius is still R but this distance right here that short little distance right there that is our height and that is what's called the piston to deck height or simply our deck height. Notice that we're only given the height here. We have to calculate the volume. But the key is just like the gasket, it's calculated the same way. It's still a cylinder, so we're still going to use pi r squared times height to calculate that. So our deck volume is going to be pi times 2.000 squared but this time we're going to multiply it by our deck height, which is only 6 thousandths. It's very small. And that turns out to be about 0 0.08 cubic inches. And we're done with three of our five volumes. 
Okay, I'm going to go out here to Summit's website for this next one. Uh, I want you to take a look at it. Here's a picture of a piston. Um, and notice that there's little valve reliefs cut out for the valves. Uh, those have a significant amount of volume and they affect your compression ratio. I want to show you that just about any piston you buy, you can look up this number and it says here that our piston head volume, that is to say our piston relief volume, is 6 cc's for this one that's shown in the picture. And that means that this uh, total volume of these eyebrows, some people call them in that piston, is 6 cc. So that's not a number you can calculate. That's a number you have to know about the pistons that you're using. So if we go back to our engine, we are told that our pistons in this engine have 6.4 cc valve reliefs and therefore our volume number four, valve relief or piston relief, those are 6.4 cc's. But like our combustion chambers, we just need to convert those units over. 16.39 cc's per cubic inch. And those are 0 0.39 cubic inches. Okay, now we can stop and we can add those four up. Those are our four small volumes. Take your calculator, and if we add up those four small volumes, 3.69 plus 0.44 plus 0.08 plus 0.39, if we add those up, we get 4.6 cubic inches. That is our clearance volume. Now that means we have one more thing that we need, and that is, can you recognize what it is? Yeah, it's got to be our swept volume, and we know how to calculate that. We've done that a few times now. So our swept volume, that is just the displacement of one cylinder. So our swept volume is going to be pi times the radius of the cylinder, 2.000 inches squared. But now we're going to multiply it by our stroke of 3 inches. That's the whole cylinder. And that turns out to be 37.70 cubic inches. And since we know our swept volume and since we know our clearance volume, we can calculate our compression ratio. I'm going to do this up here at the top. Our compression ratio here again is swept plus the clearance divided by the clearance. So let's do that. Our swept volume plus the clearance volume divided by the clearance volume. Well, our swept volume is 37.70 cubic inches. Our clearance volume is 4.6 cubic inches divided by 4.6 cubic inches. Make sure to add those two in the top together. We get 42.3 cubic inches divided by 4.6 cubic inches. The units there cancel, of course, and if you divide, you get 9.2, again, keeping one decimal, and that's a ratio, so 9.2 to 1, and that settles the issue. Now, there's a lot of math in that problem. In my opinion, this is the trickiest stuff that we do in the whole course, but again, focus on finding your five volumes. Either those are going to be given to you for basic problems, or you have to measure them, and that's realistically what you would do if you were building a race engine. Calculate what those five volumes are. Find your clearance volume by adding the four little ones. Your swept volume by finding the displacement of one cylinder. And then you can use your compression ratio formula to figure out that final number. Okay, I'm going to go through one more of those with you uh, a little bit more quickly here, but just to make sure you've got the concept. Uh, let's take a look at this Caterpillar 1693 engine. This is a diesel engine, so we should expect a little bit higher uh, number right here. So let's go through our five volumes. First of all, our combustion chamber. Combustion chamber volume is given here at 16.39 cc's, so we just need to convert that to cubic inches. And that's 0 0.98 cubic inches. There's volume number one. That's done. Our second volume, right below that, is our head gasket. Here, the, here again, the head gasket is a volume. It's kind of like a short little cylinder, like a slab of baloney, pi r squared times the height. So that's going to be pi 
times our radius. Wait a minute, what's our radius? Our bore is 5.4 inches here. We can note that our radius is going to be half of that, and that's going to be 2.700 inches. So pi times 2.700 inches, we'll square that and multiply it by the gasket. Now, you know that that's not a gasket volume, otherwise it would be cubic inches, it's just the height. So those are 30 thousandths, and that gives us a gasket volume of 0 0.69 cubic inches. Piston to deck volume, again that space above the piston, pi r squared times height as we've already seen. Our deck height here is 0 0.010 inches. So pi times 2.7 times 0 0.010 is 0 0.23 cubic inches. Below that is our piston relief volume. Diesel engines typically have a larger piston relief. And so that's 138 cc's. And that works out to be 8.42 cubic inches. Okay, there's your four small volumes. Those we can add together. Remember what that's called? That is your clearance volume. And if we add those up, we get 10.32 cubic inches. And that leaves us just one more volume to find. Let's go ahead and get our swept volume. So our swept volume, of course, is pi times 2.700 inches squared. But this time we're going to multiply that by our stroke of 6.5 inches. And that gives you 148.86 cubic inches. And now that we have our swept volume along with our clearance volume, we can calculate the compression ratio. I won't pop back, but remember your compression ratio is your swept volume plus your clearance volume divided by the clearance volume. So that turns out to be 148.86 plus 10.32. And we're going to add those up and divide by 10.32. On the top we get 159.18 cubic inches divided by 10.32 cubic inches. Cubic inches cancels. And if we divide that out you'll end up with 15.4. One decimal on that, 15.4 to 1 is your compression ratio. That's high but that makes sense because this is a diesel engine. There we go. Okay, you should uh, rewind and watch that video again if you uh, uh, got lost in any of that. Okay, um, I want to work through one more example with you. Um, I've got this one labeled as practice, but we're going to do this one together. Uh, I want you to notice here that everything given is in metric. This is a Honda engine, so the bore and stroke and all the dimensions would be metric. Um, so we're not going to use cubic inches here like we did for the other words. We're going to use cc's for everything. But the thing to notice here, 81 millimeters, that's not a volume. That's a dimension. We need to find the volume. 81 millimeters, move your decimal over, that is 8.1 centimeters. That's the dimension that we want to use. The stroke of 87.2 millimeters, that's 8.1. 72 centimeters. So when you're doing your work for uh, this topic, if you're doing the trickier problems, make sure to move those millimeters to centimeters if they're not already. 0.9 millimeters, that becomes 0 0.09 centimeters. And your deck of 0.13, that's 0 0.013 centimeters. Your combustion chambers are already in cc's. Here we go, let's find our five volumes. Number one, your combustion chambers. 
Your combustion chamber volume is given here to be 38 cc's. In the other examples, we've converted those to cubic inches, but we're not going to. We're going to use cc's here. And so we're going to stop. We're done. Volume number two, our gasket. Our gasket volume is going to be pi r squared times height, as we've seen uh, in the last two examples. The bore is 8.1 centimeters. It's worth noting then if our bore is 8.1, that our radius is half of that, 4.05 centimeters. If we divide 8.1 by 2. So our gasket volume is going to be pi times 4.05 centimeters squared. We're going to multiply that by our gasket thickness, which is 0.09 centimeters. That turns out to be 4.64 centimeters cubed, or cc's. Below that is our deck volume. And as we've seen, that's almost the same as gasket volume. Pi times 4.05 centimeters squared, but we want to multiply that by our deck of 0.013 centimeters, and that's 0.67 cc's. And below that, of course, we have our pistons, and our piston volume is given as 8.2 cc's is listed as piston dish and again we don't need to change that um, that's all set and so we can add those four together and that gives us a clearance volume of 38 plus 4.64 I won't write this down plus 0.67 plus 8.2 of 51.51 cc's that's our clearance volume now let's go ahead and find our swept volume, volume number five. Our swept volume, as we saw before, is going to be pi times our radius of 4.05 squared, but this time we're going to multiply it by our stroke of 8.72, and we get 449.34 cc's. We actually uh, worked with this engine in the last section. We figured out the displacement of the engine. Now that we know our swept volume and we know our clearance volume, we can go ahead and find our compression ratio. Our compression ratio then is going to be, I'm a little low on space, so uh, our swept volume is going to be 449.34 plus our clearance volume of 51.51 divided by 51.51. Add those two on top together and we get 500.85 cc's divided by 51.51 cc's. The units of cc's cancel. And when you do that division, you end up with a compression ratio of 9.7 to 1. So all the fundamentals to that problem were the same, except we did everything in cc's. Um, and the units at the end cancel anyway, that's why it doesn't really matter what units we use. Okay, so to wrap up that topic, here's what you need to make sure to know. Make sure that you understand the five volumes that are calculated in computing your compression ratio. Your combustion chambers, your head gasket, your deck volume, and your piston relief. We talked about each one of those. Uh, and then also how to find your sweat volume, which we dealt with when we were working with displacement. But also... Make sure then that you know these two facts. Your clearance volume is the sum of those four smaller volumes. That is the volume when we're at top dead center. And if we add on the swept volume to the clearance volume, we get the volume at bottom dead center and divide it by the clearance, and that is what gives us our compression ratio. Anything there can be written down on your formula sheet, and by all means, you should. Okay, make sure to reach out if you have trouble. Uh, otherwise, go ahead and do the uh, specified problems, and we're going to start um, a new topic in our le next lesson.